Hey everybody, uh, tonight I'm going to show you that this expression that depends on an integer is never equal to a square number. So uh, more tersely we could say we are trying to show that 3n squared minus 1 is never equal to a, a square integer. We can call it k squared if you want, okay? This is just a more wordy way of saying it right here. This means for all integers. Now it's clear it doesn't work for n equals zero, right? n equals zero would yield negative one and negative one is not equal to any integer squared, okay? So what I've done is just gone through a little bit of discovery here uh, for various values of n and uh, I got this table here. Now a, a nice little pattern uh, emerges here. If we consider uh, modulo four here, let's just make a column mod four. That means what do you get when you divide the integer by four? What That is, what is the remainder? So Trivially, 2 is the remainder um, when you divide 2 by 4, so we'll put 2 right here. Now, uh, right here, the remainder when you divide 11 by 4 would be 3, right? The remainder when you divide 26 by 4, that's 6 times 4 plus 2, right, is 2, right? Now, let's see, what about 47? 47 divided by 4 would leave a remainder of 3. So you can see what's going on here is we get this alternating uh, circumstance here. And you'll notice I wrote the, the bounds here. None of these numbers, none of these integers are perfect squares. They're trapped between perfect squares, which would lead you to think there might be an algebraic way to do it. But I couldn't find just a straight up algebraic way. What about 107? Does that leave a remainder of 3? I think so, because 4 times 26 is 104, leaving a remainder of 3, right? And then down here, you'll find you have a... So it looks like you have this, this pattern of remainders, two, three, two, three, uh, periodic ad infinitum, okay? Now let's, let's be more, uh, we don't want to continue this list forever, right? So let's keep going. Now, right here, for, I used a different letter K, I, probably, probably not necessary, but every integer leaves a remainder of zero, one, two, th or three when you divide it by four, right? That's just clear, that's the division algorithm. If you divide any number by four, you're, you always get a number between uh, 0, 1, 2, or 3, right? Okay, now, so uh, right here, this is, this is true because notice what happens when you square 2. 2 squared is equal to 4, but that's certainly congruent to 0 mod 4. That's congruent to 0. And I won't write down modulo. Okay, uh, 3 squared is equal to 9. But 9 leaves a remainder of 1 when you divide it by 4. So that's congruent to 1, right? So that's why this result is true. Any square, any square at all, has to either leave a remainder of 0 or 1 upon division by 4. And this is the reason why, okay? Now, so let's, let's here's our original expression. Now, notice we can rewrite it. We can rewrite it like this. Uh, why is that? Because minus 1 is congruent to 3 modulo 4, right? Minus 1 minus 3 is negative 4. That's divisible by 4. You can think of 3 minus negative 1 is 4, which is certainly divisible by 4, right? So you can replace, in modulo arithmetic, you can replace minus 1 with what it's equal to. We get this statement right here. Now let's see what we can do with this. Uh, you can just flat out get busy and do this right now. Let's just do uh, for n equals 0. What do we get right here? Um, we get uh, 3, right? For n equals 1, uh, what do we get here? Uh, 6. But notice that 6 is congruent to 2. All right? This is, looks like our little table. Now, when you substitute 2 in, again, you know, I'm taking the 2 and putting it right here. If you put a 2 here, uh, 2 squared is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. It's 15. And 15 is congruent to 3 mod 4. Again, if you divide 4 into 15, you get a remainder of 3, okay? The last one we have to check, because modulo 4, we only have three, four remainders to worry about. What happens when you substitute 3 in here? Uh, 27, 30, right? And 30 is equal to 7 times 4 plus 2, so it leaves a remainder of 2. Okay, folks, so you see... Uh, three is, I didn't write that down, but we will. So you see folks, what we're showing right here is that this 
is never, this expression is never congruent to zero or one, right? But that's that you have to be congruent to zero or one if you're going to be a perfect square, okay? So you see that we're, we're QED time here, right? We have shown what we set out to prove. Thus, we've demonstrated, right? Again, when we wrote it out like this without doing any tabular arithmetic, we tried all possible values. Zero, one, two, three, four is a complete residue set, I guess they call it, right? We tried, these are the four possible remainders. And in all four cases, since every integer is congruent to one of these four integers, that means every, uh, every not, uh, this expression is congruent to three or two for all n, right? That means that uh, it's not congruent to zero or one, and that means we've proved what we set out to prove. It can never equal to k squared. In other words, let me write this. This cannot equal to k squared. Okay, for some some you know some integer. Okay, so yeah, that's the proof. Thank you for viewing. I hope you liked it. You did the numerical evidence first. See what was going on, but this wouldn't constitute a proof. Only overwhelming numerical evidence. This part right here is is a analytical proof that proves it conclusively for all in. Thank you for reading.